and Chris drives a Tatra. Oh, lucky man. This is one of the most important figures in the evolution of motoring. But you've probably never even heard of him. He's Hans Ledvinka, who inspired the concept of the people's car. This Type 87 might be rear-engined and air-cooled, but it isn't a Volkswagen. The first aerodynamic family car to be mass-produced was made by Tatra, one of the longest surviving and most innovative marks in the world. Despite its 60 years, this feels a really advanced car to drive. The ride is exceptional, it's really level and smooth, the big air-cooled V8 rumbles away in the back there to itself, never feels stressed, though it only develops 100 brake horsepower. Of course, it's slung on the far side of the back axle, and that means the weight distribution is 65% at the back and only 35% at the front. That makes the handling interesting, to say the least. Take a corner too fast and the tail snaps out. This killed so many German officers during World War II, it became known as Czechoslovakia's secret weapon. You only have to look at the shape of the Tatra to spot the unmistakable lines of Volkswagen's Beetle, which of course went on to international stardom, selling 21 million cars. And Volkswagen didn't just borrow the styling. The mechanics of the prototype Beetle aped the Type 87's revolutionary layout. Ledvinka was less successful. He was arrested by the communists when they took over in Czechoslovakia and wrongly accused of collaborating with the Nazis. He died in poverty without any of the recognition his genius deserved. But stranded behind the Iron Curtain and without Ledvinka, Tatra continued to produce outstanding machines like the T603. It wasn't as revolutionary as the Type 87, but it was amazingly rugged and had enough pizzazz to make it different. Don't think too much of the Eastern Bloc car wash, though. A piece of pure 60s kitsch, this was the last of the aerodynamic Tatras, and it maintained the company's eccentric image. In 1959, it was even awarded a golden ribbon for its style and elegance. The 603 became a firm favourite amongst Eastern Bloc diplomats, and you could even see the odd one dashing around London. By the time production finished in 1975, they built over 20,000 examples. Well, now Tatra is back in Britain again this time as a luxury executive saloon. Styled by Vignale, the T613-5 has surprisingly all the aesthetic presence of a toaster. Under the bonnet, things get better. There's the three and a half liter air-cooled V8 developing 220 brake horsepower. And that's enough to give it a claimed 0 to 60 time of 7.7 .7 seconds and on to a maximum of 138 miles an hour. Bit of a monster, you might think, but Tatra have learned their lesson and put the engine forward of the rear axle for more predictable handling, so you won't end up in a ditch like those German officers. The car comes from Czechoslovakia, so it really ought to be cheap. The trouble is they've had to change a lot of things to make it acceptable to the Western market. Things like brakes, gear change and fuel injection. And it's ended up costing over £30,000. Whoops. Even these days, that's a lot of money. I asked Tatra importer Tim Bishop whether potential buyers would be convinced. £30,000 is a very fair price for a hand-built motor car. It's built to customer requirement, customer specification. You pay an awful lot more for a Bristol or an Aston Martin, and I'm not comparing the Tatra with either of those, other than it's probably as exclusive as either of them. In many ways, you could say it's outdated, yes, but it's comfortable, and it's quick, and it's reasonably fuel efficient, and it's unique. So what do you get for your money? Well, there's loads of equipment rather randomly scattered around the acres of walnut dashboard. You get a heating system you can program seven days in advance to warm the car up before you get in it. What looks like switches for the windows are, in fact, the lumbar support 
There's a cruise control rather incongruously located down here. The electric windows and the electric sunroof switches are back on the console. And uh, for in-car entertainment, there's a decent CD system. You can even specify different axle ratios, so you can make your Tatra a sprinter or a cruiser. This is the development car with 60,000 miles on the clock already. And I was quite prepared to hate it this morning. I have to admit, after driving it most of the day, you find it endearingly entertaining. For such a big, heavy car, you can hustle it along at quite uh, surprising speeds, and it feels competent and relatively poised. It doesn't have the reassurance of a big BMW or a Mercedes. You're always conscious that that engine really is in the back. But even so, you can lift off on bends and even brake, and it's totally forgiving. Well, almost. When it comes to the image of a car costing £30,000, then obviously most people are going to take the safe option, something like a BMW or a Mercedes. But that's missing the point, because this car is the epitome of individuality.